Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to work with the box model in CSS and we'll also do a little bit of formatting the background using some background images and textures. Now in cascading style sheets we talk about the box model and what that really refers to is elements are contained within their own box. So for example, the body tag, the opening and closing body tag is a box that contains the rest of the content of the page. Heading one is its own box. Paragraphs create their own boxes. And one way to really see how this works is in a style sheet, if we added some background colors around this, it becomes very apparent of where the boxes are. So right now our body has a background color and in the preview you can see that this is the entire body because it's all covered in blue with that background color. So if I come in and I make a heading one style and I put a background color around that and let's just make it green. Right, this is going to be really pretty after we're finished with all of these colors. And then let's put in um, one for heading two. I'm just going to do the same thing, only a different color. And we'll make that fuchsia. And then we'll do a paragraph tag. Same thing, we'll put a, a background color in there. And let's just make that white. So now if I preview this in the browser, can actually see all of the boxes, right? The body tag is this big blue box and inside that box is our heading one. And then we have paragraph tags and each of these create their own boxes. The same thing with heading tags, the heading two tag. So these are boxes and what we can do with these boxes is we can control them through style sheet formatting. So we can give each box its own height and width. We can put padding around it. We can put margins and borders around them as well. So for example, if I come back and I'm going to work with the heading one box. And in addition to making it green, let's add some, let's add a border. So we'll say border and we'll make it uh, black, thick, and we'll say solid. So if we come back to the preview, you can see that we have a thick, solid black border around our box. Now if I come back and I can add on to this, let's put in some padding. So if I say padding, and I'm, this is measured, I'll do this one in pixels. Let's just say 20 px. So now if I come back, you'll see where the padding is in the box. So it's between the content of it and the border. The other things that we can do or control about a box will be its margins. So in addition to that, I'm going to put in a margin. And I'll do margin all the way around. We can specify each one individually. But we'll just, if I just do margin, that will be all the way around. And let's say we'll do an M measurement, an EM measurement. So we'll say 3M. Now we'll go back into the preview. And you can see now this is the space of 3Ms. Ms are based on the base font size of the page. So this is 3Ms. The space around the bottom is 3Ms. The right and the top. So each of these elements can be defined with their own boxes. And we can have margins and padding and borders around our boxes. So we can use the natural elements that are available in HTML in order to format them just like we did with the heading one tag. So these elements that are contained within boxes, things like paragraphs and headings, 
ordered and unordered lists will come into that category where they have their own spacing around them. But we can also create divisions and put those into their own box. Say for example, I wanted these two paragraphs to be together in their own box. So right now you can see that they are two completely separate boxes. But what if I wanted them to be grouped together so that they all have that it's one continuous white background here. So we use the div tag as our tool to be able to put these things together and then we use our CSS formatting for that. So let's just call this div ID equals let's say white BG for white background. And I'm going to close the div at the end of the section or the area where I want to be included. I'm going to put a comment in here. I like to do that when I'm using a lot of divs. So I'll say end white BG. So now instead of using my paragraph tag here to format each individual paragraph with a white background, I'm just going to change that so that it is for the ID of white BG. So now when I go back to the preview, both of these paragraphs should be combined together with a white background around it. Right? So now we have one continuous division. And generally when I'm working with things like this, I don't like to have the text right up to the border or to the edge. That's usually a telltale sign of a novice developer or designer. So what I'll do, since I have this in that box, this division box, let's put some padding around it and we'll say 20 pixels and then see what that looks like. Right, so now we've got a little nice space around here. I put all this together just so that you were able to see how the box model works with this. And it's a little crazy looking, but it was intentional. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to take out all of these formatting for the heading one tag and the heading two tag and look at a more realistic way of combining these things together. So if I come back here, this is what we're up to now. And you may have seen pages where you have a background going on here and then you have content laid out on top of the background. And so let's look at an example of how we might do something like that. So if I come back to my code, right, we went, when we put in a background, we can put it, if we put it in the body tag, then it will cover the entire page. So we'll say background image, and you need to put in the URL to where the image is located. Now my image, I have, right now I'm working in the about folder. So my about HTML file is here, and my background image is in the images folder, and it's in another folder called backgrounds. And I'm going to shoot for the floral JPG file. So that means that I have to tell it from where I am now, I have to go up a level in order to get out to the main level where it can find the images folder. So to do that, we say dot dot slash to go up one level. Then we find the images folder. And then inside the images folder is backgrounds. And then inside the backgrounds folder finally is my floral.jpg file. So now if I preview, we have this wild and crazy background. And you can see, just in comparison, having text on this kind of a wild background makes it really hard to read. But this example here can start to give you an idea of, well, if I put it on a white background or a more solid looking background, I can still use this great design for my wallpaper. So rather than having this division go around just these two paragraphs, let's have it go around all of this text. And so this is a typical style format that you may come across. So rather than having my ID, my division here, I'm going to put it right after the opening body tag. 
because I'm going to tell it to start within the body. And then instead of closing it after this paragraph, I want to close it just before my closing body tag. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this everything inside the body tag and putting it inside a division of its own. You also see this sometimes called wrapper, where we're taking the whole body and wrapping it up in its own division. It doesn't make any difference what you call it as long as you're consistent with the name and your formatting. So now by taking the entire body tag and putting, in a, di putting a division inside of it with all that content, if I come back to my preview, you'll see that now all of the content of my page is on the white background while I can still see my background image. And let me collapse my files over here. And you can see that the size of the screen as I make it wider or narrower, it is adjusting. And that's because the margins are set to be a certain percentage of the entire width of the screen. So if I come back into my CSS, we can see that inside the body tag, we have a margin left of 20% and a margin right of 20%. But let's take a look at what happens when we start putting images into here. And sometimes this can have an impact. So I'm gonna put in a paragraph tag and my image and I have a little logo that we'll put in. And again, I have to go back up a level to get into my images folder. And once I'm in there, I have a file called banner and we'll put in some alt text saying sample banner and the height is equal to 125 and the width is equal to 735. Let's see what that looks like in the preview. Okay, so here we have our banner and our text. So now if I were to take this and maybe try adjusting it for size on the screen for different browsers, or depending on how big the user has it set, you can see the image is starting to go off here. And this is adjusting, but it's not looking too good based on the size of the image. Now I do have separate video tutorials on media queries where we can, there are some techniques on how to shrink this and resize it for different size screens. But in this tutorial, I wanna show you how we can limit the size of this so that it will stay this size, so that as this gets smaller, it won't go past there. And then how we can keep our margins balanced based on that size. So I know the width of my image is 735 pixels and I need a closing paragraph tag there so that it is correct. So what I want to do is set my division to be at least 735 pixels wide, maybe a little wider, but not to let it get any smaller than that. So going to say width, let's round it up to 750 pixels. So now if I bring this back into my preview and bring this down, you'll see that it is no longer making this white space smaller than the logo. So it's actually cutting it off. But you can see that when I do that, this is not staying evenly spaced on both sides. So let's look at how we can adjust for that as well. So back in our code, right now we have the margin left and margin right set for 20% of the body tag. And if I take these out and we, we test it out, you'll see that this is keeping this, this width, but it's just moving everything over to the left. But if we come into the division, and I'm going to paste in the margin left and margin right, but instead of saying of 20%, I'm going to change this to auto. So margin left auto, margin right auto. Now let's preview it. 
and we'll see that it's going to automatically adjust the left and the right margin based on the size of the screen. And then when we do get too small and it can't fit any more in there, then it will start to cut this off. But we've got a good layout here for being able to have the content of our page to center within the browser window. So that's a, a common technique to use to wrap up the content of, your, of the body information into its own division, give that division its own width, and then you can really see the difference now between the body and our division because the body has our background image in here and then our division has the white background on top of it. So that's a general overview of the box model and CSS and how we can apply it to laying out your pages.